later on um, I should add fuses over here but uh, I haven't got a suitable fuse holder um, I'll probably get something in line and put it in on each side one uh, one fuse for the uh, each transformer winding uh, but now let's uh, let's get the front posts assembled now this is uh, the front plate outside of the case I've coated with some polyurethane coating varnish thing and yeah it looks quite nice shiny and it gives it a little bit of more uh, robust coating um, it doesn't get dirty that's that's the main thing if if you know if it was better wood and I touched it with fingers after a while it would go all black around the buttons and uh, everywhere else so yeah outside is painted with this and what uh, what I need to do is add all the little banana plug binding posts um, as they were before and um, to reinforce it because this is just a four mil uh, wood which is quite it's stiff enough but just in case I'm going to reuse the metal plate I had which is going to come on like so and then the binding post and I've got screws in the middle all over it so it's it's held uh, in place really really nicely so I'm going to add this uh, screw all of those in like so and then we'll see how we gonna how can I connect the this to the rest of the contraption and here is the front post panel uh, assembled I guess um, and to connect all the wires to the posts unfortunately I've stripped um, the thread the thread on the they're not very good quality posts and the thread on them has been stripped uh, somewhat a little bit uh, in some places so what I wanted to do is find a way to connect some everything easily to it and what I'm going to use for that is little brick uh, connectors like this I'm just going to extract the little uh, actually maybe I'll just cut five single ones and just attach them like so uh, that should do the trick then I can just poke another wire in here and tighten it up like this and that works out quite well so that will be convenient way to attach the um, output cables to this so nice let's move on and here I have uh, two relay modules from the previous power supply and this um, can switch just switches the um, 5, uh, 5 amp 30 volt relay over here on the output and they're controlled by two switches on and off and it's got a status LED and that's gonna get wired up to the front panel now I know the DP30V5AL uh, has got on off switch on the output which is great but um, I still want to have the option to completely isolate the output um, completely disconnected so um, that gives me confidence that you know what it's it's fully disconnected sometimes you know you may want to do that so yeah uh, I'll be putting those back in as well and um, yeah they're not pretty but they work actually so yeah I'm not going to change them um, I'm thinking I'll sit those somewhere here like that uh, side by side and output from the relay will go straight to the output terminals this has to get uh, connected to um, to the modules to the switch modules so let's uh, let's get this done I connected uh, two pieces of mains flex just because it's a fat wire um, directly to the pads of the filter caps on the rectifier modules and I will use that to connect to um, to the switch mode modules um, so I can install those in right now and we'll do deal with the rest of it while they are in place so let me just wiggle them in place those should fit in nicely like so that's one and that's two let's do this one this way okay those sit nicely like that and right now they sit and the, they are loose but what I've what I've got is little pieces of uh, 
little pieces of wood and I've got screws and little dowels let me see if I can show that so this should go in place like so to squeeze them in like this so now the modules are f held firmly in place they're not going anywhere um, they're held by the little contraption of the dowel and bracket and everything else and here they are at the front so now I've got only got space underneath to fit those things in um, after I of course solder everything to them now I have to marry up those two together. Uh, I've purposely left um, those wires up. I'm just going to splice wire to wire on this and uh, put a little bit of heat shrink um, on each of them. It'll just be more convenient this way. So, um, yep, I'm going to start doing that and come back when I'm done. Might as well test the modules themselves, make sure everything's still okay. Um, so yeah, a uh, quick visual check. Um, negative negative to in negative in negative to negative yeah so that should be it so let's let's power this up and make sure everything's still working so so far so okay the set works that works okay uh, this is input voltage input 39 32 and 39 25 that's fine output output we can do output off output off okay Output on, output on, and you can, the current limit is set to uh, very little. Um, so when I switch the output on, uh, you can see the LED, the constant current kicks in for a moment. Like, oh, that's off the camera. That's the second one. Yeah, so. That's all fine. And the only thing that's not working yet is the top and bottom buttons over here because those will get connected to the relay. Um, but so far, so good. Okay, that's all wired up. So now if I switch the output on, you should be able to see I can switch the one channel on and off and you can hear probably hear the relay clicking and the same for the second one so yep that's how I wanted this to work so all that's left is connect this to the output of the switch uh, switch mode power supply the DP30 V5A hyphen L that is a mouthful um, and this to the posts at the front of the unit so let's power it all off and I'm going to thread this all the way up is that long enough yeah just about and get this connected to my grounding pin over here okay so I've got those I've got those so I would like to now tidy up the wires a little bit so just nothing flops about as much more more than it has to yeah that should be fine and the main wiring is rather tidy all tucked away so that should be fine 
my meters complaining, but that's okay. So now I've got five binding posts at the top, but front rather. So I'm going to put the case on and see all nice and shiny. Because I've put that uh, polyurethane varnish on it. Like so, I need to drive some screws over here. There's four on each side to hold it together. So be right back. There you go. And that's all connected. Now the modules with the relays on, I was thinking of hot gluing them in place, but it turned out that naturally they became just a pocket that doesn't allow them to move whatsoever. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave them in there. Besides, this is not going to be thrown about anyways. Um, this will be most of the time stationary, so I think I can get away with having a little shortcut over here. Okay, uh, that's already, already, already looks quite a bit better, don't you think? So. The final piece, uh, the front face uh, of this thing, which is here, and this is what uh, what it's going to look like. And I'll show you a different angle in a moment. And I've got those buttons that should be pressing on the uh, tactile switches over here. And the way I've done this so far is. I just took a, th uh, this is actually a coffee steering stick and that I've cut into sections and um, I've got squares cut out and the stair stick is flexible enough to provide just, uh, just enough movement to press the tactile button. But the one thing I've got left to work out is how much uh, material do I need to glue on to each switch um, just so it's in the resting position is just touching the um, the tactile button and when I press it, it will press it. So let me do a little bit of experimentation on here. Right, and it turned out just to be one thickness of the strip wood that I've been using all the time. So now I've glued those on. They're not dry yet, but uh, that's fine. And now, pressing those buttons on the front, will work. Excellent. So the very last piece, uh, which is the window for here, which is here. And this is just a small piece of uh, acrylic uh, that I've cut out from some scraps and I've put a uh, film on it, like a window tint with a bluish tint. That's just what I had lying around. And if I measured it up well, I did this way. This should fit in here. Like this. And now this should go over that. And that should be complete. So let's screw in the last six screws. There we go. And this is complete. Yet again, I've managed to build something without bleeding. So, let's switch it on. And the display shines through nicely. I've got no markings on the buttons. Um, I know what, what they're doing, so, okay, I guess that's fine, but I wanted to keep it nice and plain and whatnot. So, this is nice. Now, the diodes are um, quite dim, the indicator diodes. You can barely see them on the, on the camera. They are shining through. I can see them. They're a little bit dimmer than the display, so it's really difficult to see. There we go. The, this one is a little bit brighter, so maybe I'll play about with the resistors later on. But I can actually see them, so 
yeah, that's that's fine. And there we go. That's how you can make yourself an inexpensive lab power supply. Um, this is capable of uh, up to 32 volts, I think, on both channels and up to 5 amps. Now, there are a few limitations to this design. So, first of all, the transformer uh, that I've put in there, uh, that big toroid, is not capable of delivering, you know, th full voltage at 5 amps continuously. It will just heat up and the thermal fuse will blow inside. Um, so, I, I need to be mindful of that when using this. Uh, but, you know, there is nothing, because this is um, the little modules here, switch mode power supply, uh, switch mode modules, and nothing stopping me from drawing full 5 amps at, I don't know, 12, 13, 15, 20 volts even, and that will keep the transformer happy. Um, another thing, I've not uh, got any ventilation holes in this, and I am taking a bit of a gamble here, uh, I can always change that later on, but I will modify this a little bit once I get the parts. I've ordered them uh, already, so I'm just waiting for delivery. But I'm going to put some thermal fuses on the heatsink to make sure that it doesn't go over certain temperature. And uh, because the modules are quite efficient, I think this is gonna uh, this is gonna be quite happy in a closed uh, closed box like this. The worst case scenario, I'll cut out a hole in here and maybe mount a, mount a fan or something and one hole at the bottom. It'll be fine. Anyways, um, that's it. That's completed uh, build. So I hope you enjoyed this um, little journey with me uh, in this video. Uh, it took a hell of a lot longer to actually prepare everything. Uh, it was best part of two weeks worth of evenings and um, that I was working on this. But um, it turned out quite nice. I'm happy with the end product. Uh, it's a it's a nice nice little compact design, and yeah, um, I'll be using this in my uh, on my bench uh, here on the regular basis now. So this will become my main power supply. So that's it for this one. Uh, it's probably been a long one. I'm not sure. I've not edited this yet, but. Uh, in case it was, sorry, uh, but yeah, it took me even longer to put all of this together, so I would, I would be sad if I didn't put it up on the channel. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope I've inspired you to make yourself your own power supply. Um, and yeah, take care. Thank you.